viewers of Biotechnica, welcome to another video. So today in this video, I'm going to talk about the top five benefit of junior research fellow or JRF over LS, which is lecturership. Whatever examination you're going to write, suppose let's talk about the CSIR net examination. There are two options, whether you can uh, start your PhD as a junior research fellow or you can become an assistant professor through your LS. So today I'm going to talk about what are the benefits that you're going to have if you have cleared JRF over LS. So let's talk about the complete topic in detail. So this is Caroline Green from Biotechnica. So come along with me and let's talk about the complete topic in detail. What's the first benefit of JRF over LS? As I already mentioned, if you're going to clear CSIR net JRF or ICMR JRF or DBT JRF, whatever it is, it is going to be a junior research fellow, which means you can start your research position as a junior research fellow in any of the laboratories in India, whether it is in a government research laboratory or in a university or whatever it is. So which means which makes you to become eligible to apply for a PhD with the fellowship. So government is going to provide you funding opportunity. Of course, we know about becoming a lecturer also. If you want to become a lecturer, of course, you need to have your CSIR net LS. Along with that, you need to have your PhD degree. But in order to get into a PhD with a fellowship, you definitely need a junior research fellowship. So I can say it's indirectly going to be helping you to get a PhD, which in turn can either make you to enter into a research field or into an academy also. So it makes you to be eligible for a PhD with a fellowship in India. So initially for the period of two years, you will become a junior research fellow. And you're going to get a stipend of rupees 31,000 per month along with your um, house rent allowances and your contingency grant will be given. And as we already know about the SRF, if you have worked for two years in a laboratory very specifically, you'll be upgraded to senior research fellow and you will be getting the stipend of rupees 35,000 per month for almost three years along with your HRA and contingency. This you will get only if you have your JRF, not as an LS. If you have your LS, you can go and join as an assistant professor in a college, but you definitely have to uh, finish off your PhD in order to become eligible to become an assistant professor in a university. So that's going to be the main important thing. So this fellowship is definitely going to make you uh, enter into a PhD program. So JRF has a greater benefit in comparing with the LS. What's the second benefit if you're going to have or if you have cleared JRF? So you can work in a top research institute. Yes, this is very important because it's a junior research fellow. So you, if anybody is very passionate about doing research in any sort of very specific field, you can enter into a top research institute. Suppose if you have your LS, you cannot enter in most of the scenario. You can see certain institute will ask even for a LS candidate also to apply for it. But most of the research institutes usually ask a candidate who have cleared JRF. So you can work in most of the top research institute in a research and development department or in a research institute you can work research development department you can work in any sort of companies also research institutions as we already know if you want to go for csir laboratory you can go for since if you're writing a csir jrf examination and you have qualified it you can join in any of the csir laboratory whichever scientist you would like to work under you can literally go for it and if you have cleared ICMR JRF, definitely you can go for all the ICMR project wherever it is, either in ICMR labs or in ICMR funded projects, you can go for it. Of course, DBT, you can go to Department of Biotechnology. CSIR candidates, JRF cleared candidate can even enter into DBT institutes also, which can be any, any kind of JRF examinations. If you have written, you can go into most of the research institute like ISRO, IITs, IASC, ISER. So these are some of the research institute you can go if you have your JRF. But if you have only your LS, usually most of the universities do not recruit candidates who have qualified LS. So it's always a greater benefit if you have qualified JRF. What are the job profiles that you can enter? As I already mentioned, you can enter into a PhD program as a JRF and SF. Apart from that, what else you can become after doing it? Suppose if you have your plan of working in a laboratory for two years, gain experience, and you want to go for a very specific research product, now 
very specific laboratory you can even work as a jrf so you can initially start as a project associate or a research associate research assistant usually research associate will be after your phd also jrf as i already mentioned you're going to get a stipendship also and srf and research assistant and you can also become a project fellow if you have observed most of the notification most of the laboratories will be like we are looking for a project fellow but people who have qualified csir icmr dbt jrf can apply for this position which means only jrf can apply for those position and after you can become a senior project project fellow which means this is applicable only to a jrf candidate which is a wonderful benefit for you and as a jrf or as a a researcher qualifying your jrf how much is the salary you're going to get in most of the institute an average salary usually as a jrf you're going to get 31000 as it is mentioned so initially you can get 31000 to 45000 per month along with some sort of hra along with contingency grant so definitely you can work in top research institutes in india okay the most important thing i'm going to tell you is this wonderful benefit you can skip or exempt from any entrance test for your phd admission this is one of the biggest advantage when you go in for ex there are some exceptions also when you want to apply for csir laboratories or you want to go to dbt research institute or even in uh, indian institute of science or even if you go for bark or whatever it is they are specifically going to have a specific entrance examination jnu or aims they usually have their own protocols of having entrance examination like actric but if you're going to if you have qualified any sort of jrf examination you don't have to write the entrance examination which means you can bypass this entrance examination and you can attend only interview this entrance examination of pe for people who have not qualified any examination they will be writing up uh, this entrance examination and they'll be going in for the interview process if you have your jrf you can literally exempt from the entrance test for phd entr admissions and you can directly go for the interview process which is a wonderful thing because you can just go into the second round uh, without uh, even writing your entrance examination entrance examination lot of people will write but you since you have your jrf you don't have to write it and you can literally directly go in for the interview whether you want to go for iit or iisc or iser or wherever it is you literally bypass this entrance examination and you go for it but interview is going to be a crucial thing if you're going to clear it then you can literally go as a jrf the fourth important thing is increases the chances of getting promotion yes i'm going to tell this suppose if you're working as a jrf many used to have this question like uh, i have my jrf but is it helpful for me to apply for my phd abroad yes i'm going to tell you if you're going to work in a csir laboratory or dbt laboratory uh, any sort of laboratory if you're going to work you're going to gain an experience for almost one and a half years so you might be learning some techniques like facts or mammalian cell culture and you would be learning face contrast microscopy you would be learning some sort of techniques so using this techniques when you're going to approach a professor an indian guide abroad definitely since you know certain techniques and you have an hands on experience along with that you have qualified an examination it is a way to help uh, in getting your phd abroad also so it increases the chance of getting promotions also in india as well as abroad suppose if you have joined priorly as a project assistant in a laboratory let's uh, take it as an example before qualifying csir examination you just went in for a csir laboratory and you gave up an interview and you joined as a project assistant initially with uh, 20000 to 25000 as a packages but when you were in that period you have qualified csir jrf so that time what exactly happened in the same laboratory you can be promoted as a jrf and then you can become a srf so if you are already in a research lab it's going to give a career push to you which means you don't have to go in for a phd laboratory phd admission and look for it instead you can join in the same laboratory because you have an exposure in the same laboratory also and more career options in india as i told you you don't have to stick on only to a jrf you can become a research assistant you can become a research associate you can become many many opportunities in most of the laboratories and as i told you it's indirectly going to help help you to get your phd or your postdoc abroad also because if you're going to have a research experience ultimately it's going to help you abroad but most predominantly i'm going to tell you approaching a indian origin 
research guide yes because indian origin research guides knows about csir examination so after qualifying and if you have an experience in a research laboratory if you're going to approach an indian origin suppose people who have worked in a csir laboratory got a postdoc position abroad and if they're working as a scientist in a college or university abroad if you're going to approach them definitely they know about the csir examination and about the jrf value so definitely since you have an experience and the examination they are going to hire you but almost you need to have some sort of uh, ielts toefls or in some cases gre also you need to have whether you are working in some sort of laboratory also it's going to increase the chance of getting promotion so it's going to help you in many aspects if you would like to go in for research so jrf is going to have a greater benefit when you're going to compare it with a ls okay let's talk about the fifth one it fetches a job in drdo labs and public service undertakings if you want to go in for drdo because when you're going to compare a csir laboratories or most of the laboratories if you want to attain any any kind of a permanent position or a government position as a scientific officer or a researcher then drdo usually calls for some uh, vacancies in the you know, laboratories or in the drdo itself so that time what you can do if you have qual qualified examination you can directly attend the interview if you qualify the uh, interview also you can enter there as a scientific officer you don't have to do phd instead if you clear your interview you can enter into a drdo with a very huge packages also so there are 15 drdo there are almost 52 drdos uh, consolidated of all the subject but for life sciences we have 15 drdos and you can go as a scientist or you can become a researcher so you can enter into drdo which is going to be a permanent position for you if you don't want to go in for any uh, phd programs but you would like go in for any kind of job then you can go for it and these are some of the laboratories that you can enter uh, very specific to, for life science candidate so i have listed few of them but there are 15 drdos life science division also so whichever is interesting for you you can go for it if you would like to go in for allied sciences or if you would like to go for psychological research or physiology or bioenergy or food research then you can choose any of the drdo and you can apply for the interview and when you are recruited you will be given a posting over there and you can work over there also so as a jrf you can avail but if you have your ls you cannot enter into drdo and work there as a researcher that's not going to be possible so this is a benefit for you and not only that usually a public service undertakings like hindustan petroleum indian oil ongc very specifically life sciences ongc so you can also enter this one because people who have jrf positions uh, usually will enter into this field and they can recruit and you can see the salary package here So if you are entering here your salary package initially will be like rupees 40000 it goes till rupees 80000 which means if anybody is not interested to do a phd if you have your jrf position you can even land up in a job which is permanent for a long period of time in a psu or in a drdo also so if i have to talk about the advantage or the benefit of a jrf over ls is i can say of course it's going to make you stand out of a crowd in a research laboratory but it's not only this benefit you have there are some exceptions even after if you have cleared your jrf there are some institutes like ncbs or if i have to talk about isers uh the entry level is going to be the jrf position but you have to write some sort of examination when we talk about taifr and all you have to write examination that's an exceptional cases but when you're going to have a jrf position definitely it makes you eligible for a phd position and you can work in a top research laboratory but if you are going to be only ls you cannot enter over there and you can skip or exempt or bypass most of the entrance examination for your phd and definitely it's going to increase the chance of getting promotion and it's going to gleam onto your resume also and of course it's going to fetch a job in drdo labs and psu also people who have qualified jrf can also become a lecturer or a professor also since you have the cut off for ls also so this is all about the top 5 benefits of clearing jrf over ls so i believe that this video is helpful for all of you so uh, if you're thinking about whether jrf is fine enough or ls is fine enough i would suggest like jrf is lot of benefit but if you're very much interested in academia and wanted to become assistant professor you can always take up ls but jrf has a lot of benefit over ls so i believe this video is helpful for all of you so if you have any questions regarding this you can always put your questions in the comment section thank you all of you